Hello, good evening, good afternoon, good morning, wherever you are in the world. Welcome to Nature Photography for the Year 2021. You're joining me today in the beautiful island of Tessel in North Holland, the Netherlands. So, welcome to Napoti 2021. Hello and welcome. My name is Benjamin Smale. I will be your host for this evening's events uh, for the Nature Photography of the Year 2021, brought to you by Nature Talks and our proud sponsors. Again, this year was like no other, meaning sadly we cannot be joined together here in the Netherlands to share our stories and celebrations. But wherever you are in the world, I hope you're keeping safe and please join the live chat to show your support for these fabulous photographers this evening. As the past years have shown us, your voice is more important than ever. With the climate crisis continuing and COP26 just finishing, our job as photographers is to show and document the devastating impacts we have on the world. We need to use this art form to its full potential, to reach an audience to show how much we have to lose by decimating the natural world. As I listened and saw these great photographers, I realized this is more than just an art form. These are not just photographers, but they are storytellers, journalists, naturalists, and scientists, and able to tell a million words with a single frame. With lockdowns and travel restrictions around the globe, it has forced many great photographers to document their own local nature and their own back gardens opening the eyes to how important it is to have this nature to escape to and to keep a healthy ecosystem, not just for nature, but for ourselves and keeping a healthy mental state. Now, let me walk you through this evening's events that will take place. There will be 13 categories where five highly commended photographers and photos of each category will be shown. I will then announce one runner up and one winner selected by our team of judges. And believe me, this is no easy task. I do not envy the judges at all looking at some of the photos that have been sent in this year. Then the 13 category winners will go head to head to win the grand prize to be crowned Nature Photographer of the Year 2021. Now that's out of the way, let's get this show on the road and jump into our first category of the night, birds. And without further ado, let's have a look at the nominations. Now, there were some real corkers in that category of birds. 
and Tessel is known as a bit of a utopia for birds, especially with waders and waterfowl and stuff like that. And I've been using this photo hide from our proud sponsor, Bateo Photo Gear, to get some of the shots you've seen here this evening. Okay, now it's time to find out the runner-up of this category, birds. And the runner-up is Miguel Angel Artus Iana from Spain. This picture of penguins going out to sea for their daily fishing trip before returning to their young to feed them. Now this was taken in South America and it's a beautiful image with beautiful colours and composition with the orange band running through the beach and the dark blues across the sea, it's truly an incredible image. So congratulations. And now it's time to find out the winner of this category, birds. And the winner is, with winter migration, Terje Kolas from Norway. This picture of pink-footed geese in a winter storm taken in Norway is a truly spectacular shot with a unique perspective that I had to look at this image a few times just to even work out how it was taken until I found out from him that it was used taking a drone, which is a running theme throughout this evening's event of beautiful aerial pictures using drones. So let's find out more from Terrier himself and how he took this magnificent photo. First of all, I'm extremely happy for you guys to pick my pink-footed goose photo out as the winner of the bird category of the Nature Photographer of the Year 2021. It's extremely exciting and unexpected and also inspiring. This is the first time I ever joined the NPOTY competition, so it's very, very inspiring, to be honest. So thank you, thank you very much. I am privileged enough uh, to have thousands of migrating pink-footed geese literally in my garden uh, every autumn and spring during migration. Uh, I have been photographing them for about 20 years from all angles, all situations, all light conditions. But I guess a lot of you photographers know this feeling that you feel that you have done everything. It's kind of difficult to make new things and you start to think, what can I do to, to create a new uh, photo out of this uh, subject? To me, the developing of the small drones has opened new doors into creative photography. Because suddenly it is possible to photograph from angles that were impossible only 10 years ago. Now you can photograph birds sitting in treetops or birds in the middle of remote lakes or on remote mountain peaks. And of course, even better, photograph birds from the air, from their own perspective, or even up in the air. And that kind of became my photo of my dreams to photograph pink-footed geese up in the air. But even with a drone, the project proved to be quite challenging. Uh, the two biggest challenges were obviously how to come close enough to the birds without disturbing them with the drone. Uh, but even more difficult was how to separate the birds from the background. Um, when the landscape is very fragmented, you have holes, you have buildings, you have disturbing roads. And things like that because these birds they roost uh, among the infrastructure and among people which is not very photogenic but certainly the rare occasion of some blizzards and some snowfall in late april made a huge difference because the snow on the ground created a huge white canvas that separated the birds from the background just perfect and the snow even made the, the location more predictable so just a very very few other fields were uh, available for them to feed on and that made the traffic in between the roosting areas and the fields way more uh, frequent. So by just waiting for the birds uh, close to one of these fields, as soon as I heard them fly by I, I took off with the drone and waited for them there and uh, if they came too close to the drone I just pulled back and it was so many attempts, so many failing, batteries empty when the, when the moment were there but yeah i i tried for this for about two two and a half days and uh, yeah you have seen the results and i'm quite happy with this one 
so many failed shots of course with uh, a cut head or a wing position that was wrong or clutched birds there unbalanced composition but one one worked and that's that's what photography is about you know uh, having this one shot and i'm very glad that the jury or the npoty 2021 also liked this photo so thank you for making this great decision and if you continue like this maybe we'll see each other again next year Thank you. The thing that grabbed me about Torrier's photo of winter migration is that it's unique. All the aspects of a good photo are there. The composition is, is really nice. Uh, there are birds in the foreground that lead your eye in and then the direction of motion and the birds on the ground take you into the photo and through. Um, but more than anything else was the unique perspective. When I first saw the photo, I had to stop and think, you know, how did he take this photograph? Um, the thought occurred to me quite quickly that it was probably a drone. And the second thought was, well, was there any sort of disturbance to the birds? After looking through the photo and examining it pretty closely, um, it looked like there was no disturbance at all. Um, it looked to me like he probably put the drone up in the air and sat there maybe many, many times waiting for the birds to pass by. Uh, after reading the story that Tori sent in later, I found out that's exactly what he did. So for the unique perspective and for the incredible patience of waiting there for a very long time, probably, uh, this photo deserves the uh, award that has been given. Now we've warmed up, let's jump into our warm-blooded section mammals and the nominations are A really tough category there, but it's nice to see a wide range of mammals. Now, I have the golden envelope here. Let's see. The runner up is Ara Undas from Estonia with young wolf. This is a picture of a young wolf, I believe taken with a camera trap, of a young wolf walking across a beaver dam in Estonia. Beautifully lit with the composition of the dam. It is a lovely photo with the backdrop of the water behind. And it's a really, the animal is looking dead at the camera and it's a, you really interact with the wolf there. Congratulations for this great photo. So now time for the winner of the mammal section. And the winner is, with silverback Chimanuka, is Sepp Freidhuber from Austria. Now this picture is of a silverback mountain gorilla. It's a very powerful image. A huge mountain gorilla beating his chest with the motion blur of an action shot. It really must have been a terrifying sight to, to witness that close. Now, you know, mountain gorillas are extremely endangered now. With only 880 left in the wild, this picture is more important than ever to show and protect these beautiful animal species. So let's hear from Sepp himself and the judges that awarded this photo. Gorillas in Congo have taken this picture. They live in the Karusi Biega National Park. Karusi Biega National Park is close to the town of Bukavu at the Lake Kivu. And during the Civil War, in the late 19th and 90s, the rangers, they pushed the gorillas deep into the forest to save them from poaching and from the soldiers who were looking for bushmeat. And so they killed many of the animals in the forest. Now, in Karusi Biega, we have two groups of habitated gorillas. And one of these groups is the Chimanuka group. 
The silverback is Chimanuka, is about 35 years now. And Chimanuka has a group of about 20 to 25 female and young males. I have visited Chimanuka, I believe, five or six times. And once we started our trip in the morning to another group. But we were not successful. The Kohenes were deep in the forest and after four or five hours we came back to the Chimanuka group. If you are close to the gorillas, you have one time to visit, one hour to have to visit them. And when we came close to Chimanuka, his females were around and eating. And he had no overview over his group. And so he was nervous. And Suddenly, he stood up, started drumming on his breast, and was running against me. I went back one step into a bush, and while I was falling back into the bush, I pressed my camera and took this picture. And so this picture shows the movement of the gorilla, and I was very lucky that the picture uh, is so successful on this uh, award. After this, Chimanuka went down and climbed up a tree to have a better overview about his females and his group. All the best, good luck. Hello, this is Tin Man Lee, one of the judges. And the mammal category winner is titled Silverback Chimanuka by photographer Joseph Friedhuber. When you look at this image, it's full of motion. And the motion is actually created by a slow shutter speed. Uh, if you look into the vegetation uh, all around the, the gorillas, especially on the right-hand side, you can see that uh, it, um, uh, every point, every pixel of the image become this uh, stretch of lines. And uh, it's because of the one thirty of a second of a uh, slow pan blur of a kind of a crazy action uh, right here. And uh, and because of that, it really uh, incurred uh, the motion. And, um, and, and, and out of the whole image, uh, really only the, the, the part that doesn't have the motion blur was the face and the eyes, which are very sharp. And you can see that the photographer was able to capture the personality, um, the, the emotion of the silverback gorillas. And because of this uh, pan, uh, pan blur from left to right, and also at the same time, the gorillas was uh, doing the chest beating, um, and the, the chest beating was actually going uh, against the motion of the, the movement so that it created this very interesting shape of the, the fingers and the nails of the, um, uh, uh, the hand of the, the gorillas, which really makes it uh, a very memorable uh, moment. So as one of the judges mentioned, I, I really like uh, how he used to describe this image as raw, R-A-W, raw. Um, and you, you can really feel the raw power as if the gorilla was just emerging from the forest, really uh, uh, jumping out uh, with, with that kind of um, uh, power in it. And, uh, and, and also um, uh, uh, the composition also really shows, uh, show, shows that. So we also take, uh, uh, take it very seriously about the ethics of the photos. So, uh, uh, so we make sure to check with the photographer and he mentioned that he was with a uh, professional guide and this gorilla was not charging at them. Uh, he is really charging at some of the female gorillas on the right hand side and it really sh uh, 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 shocked the photographer and also the guide. And literally the photo was taken when the photographer was uh, falling down so it uh, the, the motion blur created uh, was an accident but sometimes accidents can create some stunning work so um, I want to congratulate uh, uh, Joseph uh, Friedhuber for this um, amazing photo Truly fantastic stuff there by Sepp. You know, it's amazing that you managed to, to, to push the shutter while falling back. You know, it must have been terrified to see a giant silverback running at you, you know, beating its chest, makes the hair stand up on the back of your neck. So congratulations, Sepp, for this fantastic image.
Now to category three, other animals. Now these can be any other animal apart from birds and mammals. So it's a very open category. You know, this could be sometimes animals that are overlooked like amphibians, reptiles, insects, other invertebrates and crustaceans. So let's have a look what the judges selected as the five highly commended photos for the nominations. So it's that time again, the golden envelope is here. Category number three, other animals. And the runner up with slow but safe is Ruben Perez Nervo from Spain. Congratulations, Ruben. It was a fantastic photo. It was a macro shot of a small snail trailing along a leaf. The snail was almost translucent. And the more I look at this image, the more you see the veins and the details running across the leaf, the outline of the white path that the snail is following, the composition of the way it swirls round. It is truly a fantastic image. It's bright, it's powerful, and a great macro image. So congratulations to Ruben. And the winner of category three other animals is, is Walking Among the Fennels by, yes you guessed it, again by Ruben Perez Nervo. Congratulations Ruben, it's a, a truly great image. You know, the backlight on this image, which I believe was the sun setting behind, but then at the same time he's managed to beautifully light this caterpillar beautifully comp um, framed in the shot, walking along the fennels. It is a fantastic image. Again, it is colorful, it is powerful, and a great macro shot. So congratulations, Ruben. Let's hear from the judges and Ruben himself. Hola a todos. Bueno, en primer lugar, Quiero darle las gracias a Fotógrafos de Naturaleza 2021 o a Nepoti, como lo conocemos por aquí, por haber, haberme premiado esta fotografía como ganadora de, de otros animales. Para mí es un orgullo. Eh, me he presentado otras veces este concurso. Había obtenido una mención de honor, pero nunca había ganado el primer premio de, de una categoría. Estoy muy contento. Así que os doy las gracias. Eh, la foto pues, es una oruga de, de la mariposa macaón que, que está, suele estar muy, mucho por las, por las plantas del hinojo, les encanta alimentarse. Y la foto está hecha por la tarde, a última de la tarde, empezaba a bajar el sol por detrás de, de unos árboles del fondo. Y estaba muy quieta la oruga hasta que empezó a moverse y aproveché para el momento para, para hacer, intentar componer rápido en la posición en la, que, en la que podéis ver la foto. El fondo es la luz del sol entrando a través de unos árboles, también intentando componer con las sombras y las luces que había por el fondo. Y como era un contraluz tan fuerte, pues eh, me serví de un panel de LED para, para poder iluminar un poco la oruga y, y el hinojo y darle un poco de relleno. Nada, eh, estoy muy contento de recibir este premio y espero que disfrutemos de la gala aunque sea de forma virtual y muchas felicidades a todos los premiados y de este gran concurso internacional. Muchas gracias y un saludo. Hasta luego. In macro photography, People usually focus on details. So what makes this image so special is the innovative point of view that the author wants to show us, where fennels appear like an enchanted forest in the background. So I'm very happy to introduce the winner of other animals category, Ruben Perez Novo from Spain, with the picture Walking Among Fennels. Wow, 
the double bubble by Ruben. Congratulations, Ruben. Some really great lighting techniques there to pull these images off. So congratulations again. Now let's take a look at our next category, category number four, plants and fungi. And the nominations are, So, category four, plants and fungi. And the runner up is Adun Reikardsen from Norway. Now this picture is a cloudberry considered in the Arctic as edible gold. This was taken in the midnight sun in Norway, setting in the horizon or just setting before it comes slowly back up. The sunset is a very powerful sunset with a star effect going on and the clouds above it. And then the cloudberries right in the front of the foreground, making them larger than they are. And again, it's beautifully exposed for both the background and the cloudberry. So congratulations. It's a fantastic image and hats off to you. And now time for the winner of Plant and Fungi. And the winner is Heath of Hoare by Rupert Kugler from Austria. Congratulations, Rupert. This is a picture of a truly magical moment of the, the, the light coming through the forest with the hoar frost glittering down with the heat of the sun hitting it, almost giving it a blanket curtain of glittery sparkles. It's a truly magical photo. And I believe this was taken again during lockdown in his local area. So again, it shows that, you know, that you don't have to travel far to get these amazing images. The more you know about your local area and go out in these kind of weathers that, you know, are sometimes not great to stand in, but do truly capture some great moments. So congratulations, Rupert. Now let's hear from Rupert himself and the judges that selected this winning photo. Hello everyone, my name is Rupert Kogler and I'm greatly honored that my image Heat of War was awarded as the winner of the Plants and Fungi category of the Nature Photograph of the year 2021. But even more, it's important to me that the image might reach a larger audience now and so it might have an impact on conservation by touching some people, hopefully. That's what my images are made for, to be seen and also to be felt by some of the viewers because it's my main approach to create images of nature's grace which can touch people emotionally. Touching open heart seems important to me because I guess the heart is actually never wrong and if we can manage to listen to it when we experience real nature, we will appreciate its immense value even if one doesn't have any clue about conservation issues or ecological facts and so on. At least for me, scenes like the one in the particular image make me immediately realize nature's universal beauty, which goes far beyond what one can capture in a single two-dimensional photograph. And to experience moments like this, it's not necessary to visit remote places. Also, the nature just around the corner can provide magnificent moments like the one in Heat of Hoar, which was taken pretty close to my hometown of Linz, Austria in autumn. And by the way, the scene you can see here in the background is exactly the frame of the image. In the lower areas where I live, there is often heavy fog in autumn, but the sun might shine on some of the surrounding hills. And the areas where the sun and fog merge in the woods, if they do so at all, are especially the ones I'm looking for. That particular day in 2020, when I took the image, I was lucky enough that uh, due to temperatures below zero, the fog created these mesmerizing patterns of horror frost on the branches of the trees. But even more fascinating to me was the fact that the sun melted some parts of the horror frost in the treetops, and so these particles of ice just fell down as a glittering curtain right in front of me. So just one more of nature's magic moments. My congratulations to all the other awardees and thank you so much 
for this award. Plant and Fungi category winner is titled Heat of Hall by Rupert Kugler. And um, when you look at this photo, the first feeling is that it is uh, full of hope. It just gives you this uh, warm feeling. And the photo is very special uh, and is full of uh, contrast and tension uh, when you look deeper into it. For example, um, when you look onto the left, this tree is in the shadow, in darkness, and full of frost, which is beautiful, uh, with uh, this beautiful pattern which align with the ray of light uh, on the top going to the right-hand side, and then the, the trees um, uh, on the right-hand side is filled with gold. And at the same moment, uh, as the photographer described, um, this frost, um, uh, whole frost, is uh, um, uh, melted on the top and because of that, uh, it fell down almost like um, a snowfall and it catches on the backlit to make this photo just uh, magical, almost like a fairy tale. And, um, and, and, I, and, I, and I think uh, this photo is absolutely full of uh, different lines and patterns and warm and cold. It just makes your eyes keep moving along. And then for the photographer capture the moment when this fleeting uh, uh, few seconds with the light rays passing through, it makes this whole image um, really magical. So congratulations, uh, Rupert, for this amazing photo. asked to make this award show, I immediately used this opportunity to go to my favourite place of all, and that is the island of Tessel. Now this island is in the north of the Netherlands and is part of the Friesland Islands, and this is the largest island in that chain. Now this is place is a mecca for wildlife and birds, but nothing is more iconic on the island than the scene you see behind me of the island lighthouse built on a 20 meter dune with the North Sea to the north and west and in the Wada Sea to the east. Now this iconic landscape is beautiful and it leads us to the next category, category five landscapes. Wow, some really stunning vistas in that one. I don't envy the judges for choosing the, the winners on this one because in my opinion, they're all pretty fantastic. And it's nice to see some regular faces in that category and some new ones. So without further ado, let's announce the runner up for category five, landscape. And the runner up with the prow is Andrea Pozzi from Italy. Congratulations, Andre. Now, Andre is a regular face in this competition and always submits beautiful photos and this one is no different. Now I had to read up on this photo to find out what was going on but it, basically it's of a high desert plateau of a surreal desert landscape. The white pumice stone is from a volcanic explosion crystallized uh, on this black sa volcanic sand. Uh, the contrast, the colors are truly amazing in this one. So congratulations, Andre. And now for the winner of this category landscapes. And the winner is, it's a great photo, is Dragon's Layer by Denis Vodkov from Russia. Congratulations, Denis. This is taken from the farthest east corner of Russia, um, of an erupting volcano in a wintry scene. The cloud above the volcano with the lava flow coming down the volcano, lighting the cloud. And it's taken at that dusky twilight hour to really, you know, pop and stand out uh, that lava flow coming down the mountain. It's truly a remarkable photo and I'm very jealous of this one. I'll have to come to that corner of the world because it looks amazing. So let's hear what the judges have to say and Dennis himself from the other side of the globe. Здравствуйте. Я хочу 
благодарить всех организаторов и членов жюри конкурса Миша Фотографа Узия за выбор моей фотографии. Мне очень приятно, что дикая природа Камчатки не оставила вас равнодушным. Тема вулканов для меня очень близка, так как на Камчатке находится около 150 вулканов, и я живу среди них. На фотографии изображен самый высокий и действующий вулкан Евразии – Ключевской. Он находится на Дальнем Востоке России, на Камчатке. Этот вулкан «Жемчужина» Камчатки, он извергается почти каждые 2-3 года, и я уже на протяжении 10 лет снимаю его извержение. В этот раз съемки проходили зимой, и все усложнялось сильными морозами. Когда началось извержение, мы сразу же начали готовиться к поездке на вулкан, так как знали, что его активность может продлиться всего там несколько недель, а может быть и полгода. Но ждать теплой погоды у нас времени не было, поэтому мы очень быстро собрались и уехали на извержение. Добираться туда нам пришлось около 600 километров. Так как я имею большой опыт съемки этого вулкана, я уже точно знал, какой сюжет мне хотелось бы снять в этот раз. Такой сюжет можно было снять в сумерках, когда еще были видны очертания вулкана, но при этом на его склонах уже была видна раскаленная лава. Вечером второго дня нам очень повезло. Над вулканом появилось большое лентикулярное облако, и в сумерках э, начала проявляться лава, которая подсвечивала это облако снизу. Это было просто удивительное зрелище. Мы снимали практически всю ночь. Каждое движение является особенным, и каждая фотография оставляет память об этих геологических процессах в истории. Желание популяризировать свой край и показать его красоту сподвигло меня на участие в этом конкурсе. Я впервые участвую в нем и рад, что тема, которая меня волнует, не оставила равнодушными всех членов жюри. Спасибо. Hello, this is Tim Manley, one of the judges. The landscapes category winner is Dragon's Lair by photographer Dennis Bakov. So for this image, when you look at it, it for starting from the lower left, it started with uh, a distant mountain, and then uh, with, because of the repeating pattern, uh, our eyes is naturally drawn uh, from the smaller mountain to the uh, bigger one, and then uh, you know this is the volcano uh, eruption. And the photographer spent a lot of time to wait for the lenticular cloud, um, and because of the lenticular cloud's shape, kind of um, elliptical, um, so it really um, um, have a, has a nice contrast with the triangular shape of the, the mountain as photographer this in his description saying that it resembles like the shape of a pyramid so uh, triangle uh, elliptical um, and and really nice uh, contrast between the cold and mystery of the the cloud and the blue versus the the eruption which is uh, bright red um, and if you look into the top of the, the image, um, the, the space created underneath the darker cloud has also the shape of uh, almost two mountains that mirrors um, the, the two mountains in the, in, the, in the lower part of the image. And this kind of um, mirroring and uh, repeating of pattern really creates a very interesting uh, visual journey for the, uh, for the viewers. And um, the, uh, the, the lenticular cloud also reflects the light and the warmth of the, the eruption, which uh, really connects uh, everything together. So uh, this whole image, when you look at it, it gives you a very dreamy yet powerful uh, feeling of the, the nature's wonder. So congratulations for this wonderful shot. Truly beautiful work there by Dennis, so congratulations again. Now let's take a deep dive into our next category, underwater. I know, I'm sorry, it's a bad pun. But let's have a look at the nominations.
truly remarkable photos there with a unique perspective that we don't often all get to see in the deep depths of the ocean. So let's have a look at the runner-up of this category underwater. And the runner-up is Dolphin's Home by Dmitry Kok from Russia. Now, this is a fantastic picture uh, taken off the coast of Egypt in the Red Sea, one of the best places to swim and photograph dolphins. Now, this is a pod of spinner dolphins, and I love the colours in this photo, with the highlights coming from the sun at the top of the sea and the sandbank below, beautiful, clean sandbank, and then this pod of dolphins in the middle with this blue band of the sea in, uh, coming across them. Now, the dolphins are beautifully composed with the largest dolphin at the front and then all slowly trailing off to the smaller dolphin. It's a stunning picture, so congratulations Dimitri on this great photo. Now there can only be one winner in this category of underwater and the winner with red in red it is George Niles from Germany of a pygmy seahorse taken in Indonesia. Now, what can I say about this photo? It is truly amazing. You know, just finding this seahorse is spectacular. These things are tiny, uh, an amazing feat just to even see one. But not only that, he has got a pin sharp photo of a beautiful seahorse. The colors in this photo are truly amazing. Red on red is a perfect name for it. Now, I could talk about this photo all day, but I'm gonna hand you over to the judges and George himself on how he captured this amazing photo. Jumbo, at first I would like to say thank you to the organizers of this contest. It's a honor for me to be one of the winners. In times like this, it's very important that we see powerful and colorful pictures of the nature. It's always an inspiration for me and a lot of other people. So thank you very much. It's the first time that I joined this contest and so I'm very, very glad to be one of the winners. Thank you very much. Untypically for me, I'm not underwater. <laughs> I'm in Kenya and so I have to make this clip uh, somewhere here. I hope the quality is fine enough. Uh, we only have to take care a little about the hippos around, but we will see. From river horses to seahorses. Making photos from seahorses is not very easy. They are tiny, tiny animals. The size is like that, so they are approximately about two centimeters. Uh, it's, so making photos from them, we are talking about uh, magnifications of one to one or even more. And they are perfectly hide in the Gorgonia. That is the reason why I called my title Red and Red. It's hard to find them and you need assistance. Normally you are having assistance from a local dive guide. In this case it was Benny. We are making the picture in the following way. Benny is showing me the picture with the pointer and I, taking my camera, looking to the hand of Benny following the pointer and at the end you will find something interesting. It could be something like uh, a seahorse, it can be also uh, some crabs, some curious other items. So in this case I was so lucky to find a seahorse. Because it's so hard to find a seahorse, in my opinion 50% of these pictures belong to Benny. So, thank you very much. Uh, I made a lot of dives with him in Indonesia um, and we get a little bit like friends and um, a funny story about that, we, after a few dives he stopped supporting me, showing me pygmies. He make it funny because he showed me only a coral and pointed somewhere is a seahorse. Find it by yourself. But I was not able. I looked around five minutes and <laughs> could not find it. Uh, and he laughed about me. 
If you believe it's not possible to laugh underwater, you have never met Benny. It's possible, believe me. My name is Georg Nies and I'm from Germany. Underwater photography is my passion. It's my life. It's very important for me to bring up colorful pictures from the ocean. And I'm selling housings and equipment for underwater photography in Germany. Thank you very much. Asante Sana. Greetings from Kenya. Pygmy seahorses are really small, something like that big or so. So they're not easy to find and they're difficult to photograph. They live on sea fans um, and they're usually quite well camouflaged. The thing about most photos that you see of pygmy seahorses is that the polyps of the sea fans are retracted, they're pulled in. And the simple reason is that it's easy, the easiest way to find the seahorses is to wave your hand or something over or around the sea fans, which causes them to react by pulling their polyps in. This makes it easier to find the seahorses, but it obviously disturbs the sea fan and the seahorse to some extent. Now, ideally you don't wanna do that, which is the reason that we um, were attracted to this photo that George sent of the red and red, the red seahorse and the red sea fan. Um, the seahorse is looking directly at the camera, which means it's not really wary, and the uh, polyps of the sea fan are fully extended, which means it hasn't been disturbed. So though uh, photos of seahorses and, and pygmy seahorses may be relatively common these days, finding one that's first really well done as a photo and second shows absolutely no sign of harassment was the reason that we picked this photo. Here at Napoti, we like to support conservation. So I'm going to take a little break from uh, this evening's awards to show our charity uh, donation that Napoti 2021 has donated to this year. So I'm going to hand you over to Leslie to see who gets the donation this year. Good morning, everybody. How are you doing, morning, Keith and Rita? How have you guys been doing with Photographers Against Wildlife Crime? Well, there's been a lot going on. Um, I mean, I have to say that the lockdowns, the pandemic has majorly gotten into our way. There's no doubt about it. But we, we, are, we keep working and we have prepared a new project which we will launch. Meanwhile, um, Quite a few very interesting things happen that, for example, the third edition of Photographers Against Wildlife Crime has been published in China. The and that is oh. published by the state-owned publishing house, the biggest publisher in China, has published our book in only Chinese, basically. So or the Chinese market, which is incredible, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we've had by now a really very good reach, a global reach. Uh, Keith, how many countries have we sold the book into? It's over 50. It's probably nearer 60, I would say. Wow. Yeah. Wow. And we're getting uh, recognition as well. Uh, like, you know, you can see in the background there as I point. See that little gold medal there? Yeah, I see it. I see it. Right. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Britta has one there that I think she's ready to. There's a certificate that says that uh, we won the gold award first place for the uh, environment and ecology category of the Independent Publisher Book Awards. Wow. Congratulations, guys. Congratulations. Thank very you. Nice, very nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, thank you to you and everyone it's, who it's, it's an Olympic medal. Uh, it's, real, it's real gold. The real gold. Yeah, look, <laughs> look at that. Yeah, yeah. And, but, you um, know, this is, of course, sorry, this is, this is of course, also thanks to, to, you know, Leslie and Nature Talks in general, the festival, everything you gave us, the, you gave us the, what you were, the festival that gave us the stage yep. in 2017 the dutch oh people gosh, have all been, that time ago yeah dutch people yeah, have been very supportive off, of this people. they're very supportive of this project and then of course you also already last year donated some money towards the project that gave you know that really helped us with just keeping things like the technical aspect you know like yep. the website keep the website going 
keep you know the storage we have in our warehouse going and Keith and me have you know kept working on the project we would love to introduce which was planned for this year but we now changed it to next year um, and Keith might you know tell you a tiny bit more about this well I've got to be careful we don't want to reveal too much but it is sort of oh. an extension of the work that we've been doing but we're focusing in a in another shall we say relevant and topical area that's all i'm saying i uh, don't want to reveal too much area. Okay. yeah yeah and still very much to do obviously with wildlife and nature and the way and our relationship with wildlife and nature yeah. and um but incredibly relevant and but of course you know as britta says we can't really launch uh and announce our plans uh until you know we we're back at events like the festivals we're able to interact with backers and supporters like you um you know these sorts of things do not uh come to fruition uh as quickly in a virtual world and it's really and i know everyone can relate to that because we've all had our lives seriously affected over the last two you know it's coming up for two yeah. years now since yeah. this whole thing started and you know hopefully fingers crossed you know pray what whatever you believe in you know uh the next year we are all able to come back physically uh in you know a group setting and we're able to just catch up on everything and hear our news we will have you know all being well have something to show and to announce um yep. so but yeah rest assured you know fingers we are crossed. working let's, let's <laughs> we are working it. Thank you. And, um, you know, it's it, it's terrific to see that, you know, the, the work that we've done and you guys have supported is being acknowledged internationally, you know, like, you know, the Chinese government is publishing the book in Chinese, uh, and a major American um, book uh, award scheme uh, has recognized and awarded the book its highest prize. So, you know, the whole message is getting out there despite everything that seems to be raging against us at the moment. No, sounds good, sounds good. And yeah. um, uh, we are more than happy to, to help out. Uh, essentially, you do it. Uh, we only give the stage and you have the, the message and uh, a good line of uh, photographers that uh, helping this course, of course. Yeah. And to, to make a little uh, bridge uh, to this, to helping this course uh, next to last year, to give a donation to photographers at the Kansas Wildlife Prime, uh, not with a festival, but with our contest, Nature Photographer of the Year. Yeah, Nature Photographer of the Year. And also this year, we have a little surprise for you guys to help uh, to help you uh, for the coming year or years and for your new fake project, Keith and Greta. So hopefully <laughs> I will see this uh, on the second weekend or the first weekend of November during our festival festival, that we hope it will start. But we have something. For you guys. Oh ho. Oh ho. Are you being Santa again? Yeah. So we from uh, Nature of the Year uh, have something for you. And I will show to you in one, two, three. Wow. Oh. Fantastic. That's wonderful. Thank you so much. Wow. That, that is really unexpected, a wonderful surprise. That, Christmas has come early. Can I say a very big thank you for your ongoing support, yes. uh, which is like hugely appreciated. No problem. And of course, thank you to all the people that have entered the competition, not knowingly supporting this project. Um, yeah, it's absolutely wonderful. And honestly, you cannot believe, I cannot express myself enough to tell you how important it is to keep this going, especially at times like these. And I reassure you that we work incredibly hard continuously on this so thank you so much it's good yeah. to hear i will keep it yeah, let, on yeah I, thank you yeah let me say that, um just back that up because you know the the extraordinary thing about this project and what britta and i work on is that you know it's it's through support like this you know it's grassroots support it's not like there's some big donor or publisher or ngo or you know it, it's it's just down to people like everyone who enters nature photographer of the year you know with the generosity you know who are really putting their own money where their mouth is that that basically ensures that what we do 
sees the light of day. So, yeah. you know, without without your support, we 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 can't do it. So it's fantastic. And um we're very, very grateful. And, and we can't wait to come back to to Holland. Exactly. Of yeah, we, that's we what it, it yeah. so much, you know. It's just no. always been such a fantastic festival, so interesting with so many different kinds of people, different speakers, you know, absolutely wonderful place to be. So yeah, hopefully, hopefully it's going to happen. Fingers crossed. Hopefully, Fingers the ev everything all... crossed, I tell you. <laughs> everything <laughs> crossed. Yeah, we've we've really missed it, that's for sure. You know, it yeah. feels like part of our lives is sort of like is gone. So we want we want it back. We want to come back. We will be there. We miss you too, Keith. Eh? Yeah. Don't worry. We miss you too. <laughs> and also you, Britta, we miss you too. <laughs> yeah. Hey guys, thank you very much. Uh, thank you. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, thank good you luck guys. in the next uh, few weeks, the coming months. Uh, hopefully we see each other in the, in November. And uh, uh, yeah, uh, stay safe at Christmas and uh, enjoy uh, the family and friends. Yeah. Same yeah. to you. Happy Same Christmas. Same to you, guys. Leslie, and Happy everyone Christmas. at Nature Photographer of the Year. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank you. Take care. Bye -bye. Have fun. A truly great project there and I would like to personally thank Photographers Against Wildlife Crime for all the hard work they put in. You know, not only they, they go to the ground to educate these people on the devastating impacts wildlife crime has on our planet. Now let's move on to our next category and let's get a bit arty because of course our next category is Nature Art. Let's have a look at the nominations for this year. Again, a really hard category to judge this one. Some really creative photos in this category, but there can only be one winner. But first, let's have a look at the runner up of this category, Nature Art. And it goes to, with hero, Juan Jesus Gonzola Alamada. I couldn't at first figure out how they took this image. It's, it's such a creative kind of photo. Uh, it's actually a picture of an Algarve leaf uh, with a split running through the middle that he's lit underneath with this bright red light. And it sort of creates, I think, a look of an eye, like a whale's eye with the cracks running through the leaf. It's a truly artistic photo. So congratulations, Juan. So the winner of category seven, Nature's Art, with Icel is George Papa from Romania. Another regular face in this competition and another fantastic drone photo. There's been a lot of aerial photos this year. This was taken in the northern eastern part of Romania. The Icel is perfectly composed. The pure whites around this blue ice forming over the lake is is beautiful with the cracks it almost again looks like another eye but the composition the symmetry on this image is is second to none so congratulations george and let's have a look at what the judges say and george himself <laughs> everybody, my name is Gheorghe Popa and I'm a pharmacist and a nature photographer. Unfortunately, the COVID-19 pandemic prevents us from being together at Nature Talks Photo Festival for the second time. But I will take this opportunity to tell you a few words about my photo. I sell, it's an aerial photo and is part of my project Ice Anatomy. This is a very interesting subject that I'm pursuing for more than two years and involves the transformations during the frosting and defrosting process on the surface of Lake Cuesdel. Cuesdel Lake is the largest natural dam in Romania and a special place for me that I'm constantly photographing for more than seven years. It is the place where I refine my photographic technique and the most rewarding place for me when it comes to nature photography. 
I want to thank you for this prize and I want to congratulate the organizers for their efforts in organizing this competition in this difficult time for the entire planet. I also want to thank my family and my close friends. Thank you. Now it's time for one of my favorite category, when the authors can express a very personal and artistic approach to nature photography. In this picture, the perfection of a natural circular shape on a frozen lake is broken by some wildlife footprints, and I think that the contrast between this abstract geometry with something more real, recalling wildlife in winter, makes this image very powerful. This authentic piece of art was created by Romanian photographer George Popa. The next category is becoming more and more poignant and sometimes very hard to look at. And that category is human and nature. Now, this kind of photojournalism is extremely important now to spread and share the word of the growing conflicts between human and nature. So again, these images, some of these images are quite hard to look at, but again, think of the photographer that had to witness this firsthand. So let's have a look at the nominations for human and nature. So now let's take a look at the runner-up of Human and Nature. And the runner-up is Unusual Visitor by David Hupp from the Netherlands. Uh, but it was actually taken in Romania, in Transylvania, in a small mountainous town. And it's a picture of a brown bear rummaging through an industrial bin, um, beautifully backlit by the streetcar behind, uh, giving it that kind of urban effect. Obviously an image that we don't like to see, this bear is not in his natural habitat, and it just shows the, the devastating impacts we have by taking away this beautiful animal's habitat. And now to the winner of Category 8, Human and Nature. And the winner is with King of the Ocean, I'm sorry for the pronunciation, uh, Francesco Yeva Masia Riquinha from Spain. And it's a picture of a small swordfish trapped and alone in a net. And I think being alone really symbolics the, you know, the, the destiny for this poor, uh, poor swordfish. Uh, frightened and scared, uh, it has some beautiful light rays coming through the, uh, through the sea surface. It's a really great image. Uh, but let's hear from Francesco himself on how he captured this image. Hola, buenas noches. Gracias a todos por estar aquí y un agradecimiento especial a Nature Talk por invitarme a este increíble evento, uno de los concursos de naturaleza más prestigiosos del mundo. Mi nombre es Javier Murcia y vivo en España. Soy fotógrafo de naturaleza, aunque mi disciplina es la fotografía submarina. Estoy muy feliz y muy orgulloso por este premio. Estoy seguro de que vamos a disfrutar de muchas imágenes increíbles y sorprendentes 
tomadas todas de, de todos los rincones del mundo. Ahora voy a hablar un poco sobre mi imagen, eh, galardonada en la categoría de hombre y naturaleza. Esta foto es muy especial para mí, porque está tomada en la Zoía, un pequeño pueblo pesquero situado en el sudeste de España. Es la zona donde yo he graneado desde que era pequeño. Y allí fue donde comencé a bucear y a realizar mis primeras fotos. Y por supuesto, tener contacto con la naturaleza marina. En este bello pueblo pesquero hay un arte de pesca selectivo tradicional, denominada almadraba, que ya está eh, en marcha desde la época de los romanos. Se trata de un laberinto de redes que actúa como una trampa, donde el pescado acaba finalmente en un copo cerrado del cual no tiene salida. Eh, paso muchas horas eh, trabajando en este arte de pesca milenario y siempre se observan cosas muy curiosas e interesantes, como eh, la imagen premiada. Era un día muy soleado, con mucha luz, un día muy bello, y dentro de la red de pesca había un pez espada. Eh, se trata de un animal pelágico y un gran nadador, por lo tanto, se encontraba asustado y, era, y estaba bastante nervioso de sentirse atrapado en las redes. Eh, puede llegar a ser una especie potencialmente peligrosa si se, debe, si se ve acorralada, por lo que yo estaba también bastante asustado y, y nervioso de ver a este animal haciendo movimientos raros. Los pescadores del barco me decían que tenía que salirme, claro, me advertían del peligro de este animal. Pero bueno, por suerte no sucedió nada y pude realizar unos cuantos minutos de fotografía, tiempo suficiente para conseguir esta imagen, por lo que estoy muy contento del resultado final y fue por ello que decidí eh, presentarla en este prestigioso concurso de, de fotografía de naturaleza. Espero que estéis disfrutando de, de mi foto, que fue tomada con, con mucho amor y cariño. Eh, la fotografía de naturaleza, eh, particularmente la submarina, es mi vida. Tengo un trabajo que no está relacionado con este fantástico mundo, pero afortunadamente me deja mucho tiempo libre para realizar mi verdadera pasión, la fotografía. Pues nada, espero que os guste y muchísimas gracias. Nature photography can be a very powerful means to report environmental issues. But when you manage to report a situation with a beautiful shot, the message becomes very powerful. Overfishing is posing a serious threat to conservation in almost every ocean and sea and large fishes are becoming very rare sightings. Spanish photographer Francisco Javier Murcia Requena was able to capture a fishing vessel while catching a large swordfish. In this shot, the perfect texture of the nets underwater combined to the dark blue color add a lot in terms of artistic content to this environmental report. Now the next category is black and white. Now these images can be of any subject as long as it follows a discipline of black and white. So it does give you a range of variety of photos. Uh, so let's have a look at the nominations for black and white this year. You know, uh, the power of black and white imagery, it really just simplifies the image and really lets the viewer concentrate on the composition and the contrast. Um, but let's have a look at the runner up of black and white with Yin and Yang, George Popper from Romania. Again, another great image from George uh, with a very fitting name. You can just look at that image and see where he got the inspiration for that name. It's beautifully composed with the black and the white cutting across diagonally with these white trees, skeleton-like trees uh, throughout the image. It's truly a great photo. Again, taken with a drone. So congratulations, George, on runner-up of black and white. But now, time for the winner of this category, black and white. Um, the weather is taking a turn for a worse. I do see a little bit of sun peeping through the cloud, which gives me hope and hopefully warms me up a little. Um, 
but the winner of category nine is with white wedding Roy Galitz from Israel an absolutely stunning picture of two polar bears in a winter whiteout storm the way he sort of is so overexposed it's so white the image but the definition of the bear stands out from this pure white image it's truly a remarkable image and a rare sight of two polar bears beginning their courtship which is uh, something that i would love to see in person so congratulations roy uh, and let's hear from the judges and roy himself from Kenya. I'm Roy Galitz and I'm happy to welcome you with me to Kenya with Mount Kilimanjaro right here behind me. I know it's in the clouds but believe me when it's out and it is out it's an amazing sight. So I'm Roy Galitz and I'm a professional wildlife photographer and I'm guiding tours, uh, photography tours all over the world with Phototeva and I've been truly honored and humbled to win the category of the black and white in the Nature Photographer of the Year Awards 2021. And it's a huge honor to be here with you, I mean, virtually, of course, uh, COVID and everything. And I, I, I wanna tell you the story about the photo of that one. And this photo is a photo of a polar bear, male and female, during their mating and courtship in the frozen fjords of Svalbard. So when I'm over there, I look quite different than I do here right now in Kenya when it's 30 plus degrees. So when I'm there, I look like this. And it's way colder over there than here. And on that day, when I photographed that photo, it was a very, very bad whiteout. I mean, you couldn't see anything. We even lost the polar bears a couple of times. And, and, and when you're out there and the weather is so bad, I mean, the photos come out great. I mean, there's a saying in photography, the worse the weather is, the better the photos are. So that's what actually happened here. And what I like about this photo is that it's so minimalistic and it's so fine art and yet it's so intimate and touching with all the white and whites on top of each other so i mean this is what i like about this photo and and you know it was such a terrible day to photograph and be out there in minus 20 minus 25 with the wind it even reached colder temperatures but knowing the results came out so unique and i i really i feel privileged and honored to be there guiding and photographing the polar bears in svalbard and luckily this is what i do so i go to svalbard year after year for the last 10 years photographing polar bears and guiding photography workshops uh, uh with this surreal environment this white desert of of snow and ice and uh i can't wait to be back there again and hopefully uh with this year everything will go back to normal and hopefully next year i'll get to meet you all in person at the na next nature photographer of the year awards 2022 so best regards from kenya again and i hope to see you soon bye for now Sometimes wildlife photographers witness very unique moments in nature. But being able to add something personal to a very rare moment is something that only very talented photographers can do. The mating of two polar bears is something very special to see in the Arctic. And the choice of eye light exposure can really help creating a very original and personal image. I think that Roy Galitz from Israel truly deserves to be the category winner of black and white category with the picture White Wedding. Now let's move on to probably one of the most popular categories in the whole, uh, the whole event, uh, and that is animal portraits. Um, you know, each year this, this category gets harder and harder to judge with some truly remarkable photos. Uh, and this year is no different. So let's take a look at the nominations for animal portraits this year.
some absolutely stunning images there, literally stunning. Um, very jealous of the photos here, but thanks for sending them in because they are remarkable. Uh, but let's find out who the runner-up is for Animal Portraits, category number 10. And runner-up with last embrace, again, is Roy Galitz from Israel. Another great photo sent in by Roy. A picture of a young seven-month-year-old uh, young lioness cub, again, with the very fitting name of last embrace, with the, uh, the dead elephant's foot around the lion as the lion's eating the soft underbelly of this dead elephant. Now, this elephant apparently was an old female and did die of natural causes. Uh, you know, nothing will be left to waste with this animal. You can already see the flies moving in, uh, hyenas and everything else will be feeding off this carcass for many months to come. So it was taken in Tangier National Park in Tanzania, and it's a remarkable photo. And to be honest, I could do with a bit of that Tanzania weather right here now, because it is getting a little bit chilly. Uh, so congratulations again to Roy. But there can only be one winner in this prestigious category. And let's find out who it is. With Black Leopard, it's William Bernard Lucas from the United Kingdom. I know I shouldn't say it, but this is probably one of my personal favourites. You know, I, I could look at these images all day, but this one is special. Uh, it's of a Black Panther Leopard uh, taken in Africa, and God knows how many hours he must have put in to capture this image. You know, the Black Leopard with the black sky behind, with those shiny, tiny bits of light from the stars in the sky it's just you know it's a lifetime shot kind of thing so truly amazing but let's hear from William himself and how he got this remarkable image hi guys I'm Will Burrard Lucas and I'm coming to you today from my home here in the UK and uh, I'm really thrilled to be category winner today, um, particularly in this competition, because uh, really I've watched this competition from day one grow and grow and become this prestigious competition. Um, so it's a great honor to be here in this position. Uh, I first became involved with the Nature Talks um, back in the first year of this competition, actually, uh, when I came out to Holland to, to speak at Nature Talks. Um, so it's really great to see how this uh, competition has grown and, uh, as I say, a great honour. Um, I've really got to thank so many people uh, for me being here today. Obviously the judges um, and the competition organisers for all their hard work. Um, and thank you to the many people who really, you know, without them this photo wouldn't exist. You know, this was really a team effort. So uh, this, this photo is part of a long-term project um, where I was focusing on this particular black leopard in Lycipia in Kenya. And for me, black panthers are an animal that I'd always been fascinated with. I'd always dreamed of photographing them, but I never thought I'd get to photograph one, particularly in Africa where they're so rare. But then one day by chance, I heard that there was this one being seen up in this area in Kenya. And so I had to try and photograph it, even if my chances of success were very slim. And so that was back in 2019 at the very beginning of the year. I went out there and with the help of uh, Lycipia Wilderness Camp and um, the landowner of the area, uh, some scientists and rangers, lots of people sort of came together to help show me where they'd seen this leopard and suggest places where I might be able to photograph it. And then I set up my camera traps and within a few days I got my first photos of the leopard and that was then the start of this obsession as I uh, kept trying to get better and better photographs and really make the most of this opportunity. You know, it's a once in a lifetime opportunity while I knew where this leopard was. Uh, but at the time he was this young male, he was just about at the age where he was going to get pushed out of his mother's territory. And so it was always this sort of race against time to get all the photos I wanted before he was pushed away and I might never see him again. And so right from the beginning, for me, the ultimate photo of this creature of the night would be a photo showing him in his nocturnal environment. Um, and ideally, you know, with stars in the sky. Uh, but, for, but for that to come together, you know, so many other, so many things needed to go right. Um, you know, obviously needed to be a clear night and yet often he would come past when it was cloudy. 
uh, the moon needed to be below the horizon and often it would come by when the moon was up. Um, and then there was also other leopards. So as I said, it was a young male and also in this area was a big spotty male leopard. And whenever the spotty leopard was around, the black leopard would be sort of steer clear and wouldn't come past my cameras. So I got pretty frustrated of getting photos, I mean, beautiful photos of this spotty leopard when really all I was after was a black leopard. And so right near the beginning of the project, I got the ideal photo I was after of this spotty leopard under a sky filled with stars. And I then had to wait another, it was six months in total before I finally uh, got this photo with the black leopard and the stars, uh, which was, for me was the ultimate ambition of the project. Um, so, yeah, as I say, though, a real team effort. And I've got to thank particularly Louisa, the landowner, and her two rangers, Mohammed and Patrick, uh, and the rest of her staff, really, uh, who really, without their help, um, I really wouldn't have achieved much at all. So thank you to them. Uh, thank you to everyone who supported me out in Kenya and my family. And as I say to, to all the organizers of this competition and the judges, thank you guys for watching and uh, enjoy the rest of the presentation. Bye. Hello, this is Tim Manley, one of the judges. And the animal portraits winner is titled Black Leopard by William Brad Lucas. Congratulations. And um, so, in, uh, Everybody knows that black uh, panther is uh, one of the most sought after animals. And when uh, uh, when Will learned about that there is a black leopard in Africa, he spent a lot of time to gather the information, doing the research. And finally, he was able, after months of hard work, he was able to capture this special image. Um, and the difficulty of this image is that um, uh, sometimes uh, it is... Actually, a lot of the nights is uh, cloudy uh, there, so to get a clear sky is already difficult to get the the, the, the stars. And also, if it's, if it is uh, there's moonlight, it is not also possible. So you have to have a moonless, uh, clear sky to have that moment. And of course, you have to get the uh, the black panther to uh, to show up. And uh, if you have been to Africa, you know that uh, getting a big cat on the rock is uh, some of the most, uh, uh, some of the rarest sightings. So uh, having this um, uh, black leopard walking on this beautiful uh, big rock is, uh, it makes it really special. And the composition of the image is amazing. And um, a black panther against uh, the, the black sky is just, um, uh, makes it really mysterious. And um, and as you can see, the black leopard is kind of looking up into the the sky, and then the is on the left uh, looking up onto the stars on the right hand side. So this image is just uh, perfectly done for a once a lifetime encounter. Just absolutely gorgeous. So congratulations, Will, about this uh, uh, amazing win. Amazing work there by William and a truly great project and it just shows, you know, sometimes it's not just one photographer but it takes a team of people, you know, sharing knowledge with scientists to make uh, to make this project come together and capturing great images like that. So congratulations to William and all the team behind these great images. Right to the lowlands where I am at the moment, although this is pretty much a mountain here in the Netherlands, um, but uh, this is a special category for Dutch and Belgian photographers and it's nature of the Lagerlander and it just means, you know, nature of the lowlands where we are at the moment. Now, uh, let's take a look at the nominations for this category this year. Now the runner-up for this year's category, the Lager Lander. Hard one to say if you're not Dutch. Believe me, it's a difficult language. 
Um, so the runner up with flying over the pastel rainbow is Ronald Zimmerman from the Netherlands. Congratulations, Ronald. Uh, it's a picture of a common buzzard and using a long exposure, I think around a, a second long exposure, he creates this great motion blur of the background of these autumnal colors uh, and a beautifully composed buzzard in the top left corner. A really lovely image. So congratulations, Ronald. Okay, and the winner of this category goes to with Fox crossing the bridge is Andreas Teichler from the Netherlands. Uh, it was taken in the golden hour light of a fox crossing a bridge over some water uh, and it's the fox is perfectly symmetrical, a really great composition there uh, with the golden light coming across the side of the image, a truly beautiful photo. So yes, we're going Dutch. Let's hear from the winner himself. The day before I took the picture I became 60. It felt like a crossing point in my life. The focus moving gradually away from work to becoming a pensioner. The attention paid to my parents moving away to the attention paid to my newborn grandson. And fortunately more time for photography than ever before. The day after my birthday I went with my photography mate to the dunes. We looked for foxes, but we were not very lucky. As we knew that the fox sometimes crosses this bridge, we decided to go to an interesting point. Standing up there, I looked at the lines leading to the bridge, and I thought that that could be a good composition. So we waited on a bench for quite a while, and when the fox came around, from the area where it raised its cups, it decided to cross the bridge to the area where it basically finds most of its food. At that moment, I felt that we both were at a crossing point in our life. I would like to thank the jury for awarding my picture. photo contest. When you decide to insert a category so much connected to a geographic area, like nature of the Lagerlanden, I think it is important that the winning image can reflect such connection. Photographer Andrius T. Gehler, with this picture of a red fox crossing a bridge, was able to combine together wildlife, landscape and the human connection to the environment in a single shot. A truly beautiful photo and uh, all best of luck to your retirement and I hope you enjoy it and take some more beautiful photos like that. Now we're coming to the end of this evening's award show. Um, we've got two more categories left, but first of all, a very important category because it is the future of our planet and the future of this competition. And that category is youth. And there is a great range of uh, youngsters that enter this category from all ages. So let's have a look at the nominations for this category, youth. Some lovely images there and I, I'm looking forward to see you all grow throughout this competition. So let's take a look at the runner-up of youth. With contemplation is Giorgio Katias from Hungary. Sorry if I mispronounce your name there. Uh, it is a picture of a beetle uh, with some beautiful backlit bokeh. Who doesn't love a bit of bokeh? Uh, and these bokeh balls are perfectly symmetrical, perfectly round, and this beetle is centre frame of it, and it, with the um, silhouette of the beetle is a truly beautiful image. So congratulations to you uh, for sending this photo in. 
But now it's time for the winner for the youth category. With Beautiful World, it's Levi Fritz from Switzerland. It's a very mystical, magical picture, if you ask me. And it's a picture of a young alpine ibex. Um, there's a lot going on with this image. You have this, again, beautiful backlight. It's cloudy, but you see the sun starting to break through these clouds. And then in the foreground, you've got these beautiful meadow flowers and they sort of lit up in the foreground. And then you have this small ibex in the, in the right-hand side of the frame walking in. A really nice image, a very pleasing image. So congratulations to you. And let's find out how he captured this remarkable photo. Good evening. I'm very honored to be part of today's program. I'm Levi Fitze. I'm a 17 years old nature photographer from Eastern Switzerland. And the last few years, I spent endless days in the Swiss mountains to photograph um, Alpen wildlife. And one of my most observed and photographed subjects was the Alpen ibex which is a very cool subject because they weren't too shy what allows to get more creative images what was also my my goal my awarded image um, was taken on a very nice two days trip with a good friend of mine and we've already found a, a group of the ibexes in the afternoon and spent the whole evening with them had a very nice light after the sun broke through the clouds and it was a very beautiful situation because of the nice flowers in the foreground and the backlight which created a, a very cool situation. So yeah, that's it about my awarded image. Now I just want to thank the judges for choosing my picture. Nature Photographer of the Year is a contest that I'm following since a few years now and I was always impressed by the high level of images that was entered here. So that's why I'm even more happy to be part of today's evening. And yeah, of course, big congratulations to all other honored photographers. And yeah, see you out there. Have a nice evening, bye. Hello, this is Tim Manley, one of the judges. And the youth category winner is titled Beautiful World by Livy Visa. Um, so um, this image, uh, as, as uh, we were talking with the, the judge panel, we were just really, really impressed uh, with the youth category this year. So many great photos, and especially this one, uh, one big win, big one, big win by, by uh, uh, Livy. Um, so if you look at this photo, first of all, it is very different from a lot of the, um, the photos in, the, in that it is a silhouette, uh, backlit, beautiful composition. And as you can see, um, the the uh, the foreground um, has the um, uh, has has this um, really gradual movement of the uh, foreground blur into the 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 uh, the uh, the one near the uh, the uh, alpine uh, ibex and um, it created almost like a three dimensional view which is usually very difficult for uh, a, a backlit silhouette photo so it create this three dimensional view. And um, and at the same time, the the mist, the the the, the fog, and and, and the uh, ray of light coming on perfectly onto the the ibex also makes these photos full of emotion, full of this atmospheric uh, power in it. Also very mysterious, and um, the the photographer is also very skillful in that uh, if you look into it um, the side profile the ears is perfect in this silhouette and also all the four limbs have very good uh, separation and uh, the placement the light um, the, the golden light the, the black everything just makes this photo again uh, full of uh, hope full of uh, also full of um, mystery and uh, just just amazing photo so congratulations uh, uh, Livy uh, on, on it on this uh, big win. Now, 
to category 13, the final category in this evening's events. Um, but reminder to please leave a comment in the live chat and show your appreciation for some of the photographers you've seen here this evening and have your say on your favourite photo. And now to the Fred Hasselhoff Award, one of the hardest to walk away with the prize. It's not just one photo you're being judged on, but a collection of images. Um, and they all have to be truly remarkable with, a, with an understanding of storytelling and photojournalism. Uh, I will not be showing you any of the other nominations for this award, but going straight into it. So, the winner of the Fred Hasselhoff Award the portfolio with emotional range goes to Leah Leone from the USA. These are adorable pictures to start with to look at. These are brown tailed ground squirrels, bit of a tongue twister, and they show all the emotions to every other family and she's managed to capture these emotions. Uh, these were taken in Arizona in the USA and I, I won't do it justice so I'm going to hand you over to Leah herself to explain how she got these beautiful images. Hello everyone, it's Leah Lee from Arizona. Thank you so much, Nature Photographer of the Year for this incredible recognition of my portfolio work. Thank you to all the jury and the sponsors. Emotional Range is my portfolio of round-tailed ground squirrels. And although round-tailed ground squirrels are small and many may think ordinary, they actually have a very big message. And that me message makes them extraordinary. And the message is, is that they have emotions and they deliver the message that all animals actually have feelings and emotions. They show a tremendous amount of love for each other, compassion for a sick baby, shame, anger, fear, joy, happiness. They have all of these emotions. And I think with this understanding, when people see this, there's naturally a bond that occurs. And then conservation can actually occur as a result of this. So conservation for our natural world can start from maybe a smaller level of, um, you know, not necessarily the big animal that's endangered, but just from an educational standpoint. So just by observing. Uh, I took these photos in the Sonoran Desert here. That's where I live. It's my backyard. COVID began and my husband and I locked down. Unfortunately, he had late stage cancer. And so we had to, and uh, we locked down just like the rest of the world to, to try to do our best. And um, it gave me the opportunity actually to work in the yard more. And uh, I was able to photograph these animals more easily. So it, it actually, um, you know, I, I used it as my outlet in a sense to be able to photograph them. And they're super cute. It's not like it was torture. <laughs> they're really cute. The challenges are heat, you know, that's the hard thing, you know, especially towards the end of season in May and June. If you're in a bird blind, it's 120 inside and it's absolutely scorching and a lot more probably than 120. And I usually wear ice because there's no way I could really stay in there with that kind of heat. And it really just melts within an hour. The cameras have ice too, because they are always on 
and ready to go. And uh, not a lot of electronics could withstand that. So uh, they do a great job, but um, it's pretty intense. And um, I, I think um, every so often you see some other strange things. I think during that time it's snake season. So that's a little weird. We have the bull snake, which is big. And uh, we have a uh, gopher snake, which all these animals are prey for snakes. So we do get a lot of snakes out here and also the Western diamondback, which is an, a, a poisonous rattler. So it's the famous uh, tailed rattler. And so, you know, um, you know, I mean, you just have to deal with it. <laughs> I had one in my bird blind. I went out to shoot the, and photograph the squirrels and there was a, not a, not a, a rattlesnake, but a, um, it was a bull snake, a small bull snake. So it was a little surprising, but he, he did leave. And I have a video of it. <laughs> I didn't think anybody would believe me <laughs> if I told them, but these things happen, you know, these things happen, but um, they're just, you know, some of the many challenges uh, that occur. Um, one of the things that um, did occur, uh, which um, I found pretty amazing is I took a nice photograph of a mother with a squirrel in her mouth, a sick baby, and she was running around trying to figure out where to put the baby underneath a shrub to make it comfortable. She actually did it with a couple of them, and I, I got one good shot. Um, it was midday, terrible lighting, and um, actually hospice had come over to the house to help me with my husband, and it was late, it's late stage, you know, it was uh, their end of life, um, you know, support team, and so I had a, about an hour outside, and I was able to get that shot. And strangely, when I went back in, I felt like I wasn't alone. I know it sounds really stupid because, you know, it's a squirrel that's taking care of a sick loved one. But I just felt like there's camaraderie there. Like I felt like with all COVID going on and nobody around and very few people to support you that um, that I wasn't really alone in a sense. And I think nature does that for us. It, it supports us. It makes us feel better. And if we take really good care of it, it will continue to do so for generations to come. So um, it really, um, that photo really means a lot to me. I, I think they're all really cute little shots um, and I do hope everyone enjoys them. I wanna just thank my family, my Soka family, Buddhist family, um, John, who is watching from above and um, my mentors, and that would be my spiritual mentor and uh, my photographic mentors. And thank you, Nature Photographer of the Year for uh, this wonderful award. It means the world to me. Uh, thank you, thank you, thank you. Emotional Range, which was submitted by Leah Lee Inoue, grabbed my attention the first time that I saw it. The subject matter is a family of round-tailed ground squirrels, uh, which are absolutely adorable. And I'm a huge fan of cute. Also, I don't think that I've seen this subject matter uh, covered in such detail before, which helped it to stand out. But most of all, at least for me, was as much as I learned about the animals by looking at the photos, uh, the photos told me a lot about the photographer. Take, for example, there's a photo of a baby ground squirrel holding feathers for the first time, maybe for the first time. Uh, there's a priceless expression on its face. And what that told me, along with the other photos, is that this photographer spent a lot of time with his family, getting to know them, getting to know their ins and outs, their lives, their quirks, maybe, maybe even down to their personalities. And she knew exactly when and how to photograph those unique moments that capture the essence of this family, the emotional range for this aptly named portfolio. Now, only one of these photos can go forward uh, to enter into uh, Nature Photographer of the Year, and the judges have chosen this image here to enter in that final stages. Now, before we crown the overall winner, uh, we have a new award, and that is the People's Choice Award. And voting will start on the 18th of January on our website. The judges have selected 30 images that you can vote on and have your say on your favorite photo. So make sure you join us on our website on the 18th of January and vote for your favorite image. It's 
that time of the evening, the final showdown, to crown the winner of the Nature Photographer of the Year 2021. I'm going to remind you of the 13 category winners that have been put forward for the chance to win the overall prize. And then we will join Leslie and the 13 category winners in a Zoom chat where he will announce the winner. Best of luck, everyone. So now comes the exciting moment, and I already, I don't drink cheap champagne because it don't, doesn't taste that well, <laughs> but I got something here, it's cool. I don't know, it's a mega master, it looks like my camera won't show any brands, that's strange. I don't know what most of But you know this uh, set, I think. Yes. 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 If you, <laughs> if you uh, normally I do this on skiing, skiing trips, of course. If you have problems with the stomach, you take Jägermeister. Jägermeister, it's very my, close, I can tell you. My daughter lives in the town where this is produced. Oh, okay. <laughs> and how is your daughter doing, Mr. George? Uh, she's studying. Um, how is she studying? Yeah, studying with, with the Jägerbombs, I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> be sure about that. <laughs> okay, guys and girls, or ladies, sorry, Leia. It's okay. Are we ready? Yes. Yes. Okay. Yes. Don't cry if you don't win. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Next year, new chances, new possibilities. And the winner of this year, 2021 edition is... Mr. No way, congratulations. Thank you, that's Thanks. amazing. <laughs> wow, I really have the high pulse now. I'm, I'm really excited. <laughs> I'm really excited, that's very yeah. good. Totally <laughs> unexpected, thank you so much. No problem, I will toast on your... Oh, I wish right. I had one Jägermeister myself. <laughs> <laughs> Time I ever attend the, the Nature Photographer of the Year competition, so <laughs> I'm so happy. That is very nice. First attend yeah. it and immediately a prize. Congratulations. Thank you. Can you tell us a little bit more about your, uh, to make this kind of picture uh, today? Yeah, I, I'm lucky to, to, to live in the middle of the roosting area for these geese. Uh, so they roost literally in my garden every spring and autumn. Um, and I have, I have had this photo in my mind for several years. And of course, with the, with the small drones, everything became possible. So, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, to win the competition is just amazing. Congratulations again. Thank you. So sadly, for other people, uh, this year you didn't win the overall prize, but you are a category winner. So hopefully uh, you will go on to see the nature and uh, go out and make some other great shots so you can enter next year or other other contests so hopefully to uh, win an overall prize but to be a category winner amongst the uh, 20,061 images 
from 79 countries, if I have that correctly. Uh, it's uh, better, better than good. Uh, so it's... Uh, everyone is a winner here and yeah. congratulations everyone. Amazing yeah. photo. Yeah. Good. All the best, congratulations, everybody. Thank you, Seth. Great picture. Congratulations, everyone. Congratulations. It's already a great honor to be in the category winner here. Oh yeah. So Good congratulations to, to everyone. Good the overall winner for the competition is Winter Migration by Torie Colas. All of the judges love this photo. Besides the technical and artistic merits that I discussed earlier, there is one other consideration. The photo is uplifting, both in the literal sense, uh, since there's birds in flight, but also metaphorically. The perspective that's provided by the drone being in the air with the birds gives you, the viewer, um, this feeling of maybe flying or being free up in the air. It's always nice to be able to provide a positive feeling to viewers of photos. But uh, given the difficult times that we've all been going through in the past couple of years, it might be doubly so now at this point in time. So uh, Torye, thank you for sending in that photo and congratulations from all of us. Okay, so now we conclude our magnificent award show this evening. Uh, just a few words from Leslie um, to finish us off. Thank you, Ben. I want to thank you all. I hope you enjoyed uh, this evening. Uh, thanks for the submissions for 2021. Uh, we had some beautiful stunning images uh, that you submitted to us. Thank you very much. In a few weeks, the new Empoti 2022 will be live on our website. So t stay tuned and hopefully we see each other next year. Should we toast, Ben? Let's do a toast. Yeah? My favourite time of this evening. Yeah. Our lovely producer will pass us ah. some lovely Tessel glasses and lovely Tessel beer. Uh, thank you. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Thank you very much. So, how are we going to do this? Slough through a buck. Never had it. It's a weird bottle like this. Better than a cheap champagne. Yeah. It? Definitely better. Huh? So, yeah. Give me. Thank you. So we need to be a little bit creative here. Warm us up. Yeah, it's definitely cold today. <laughs> huh? So thanks again, everyone, and cheers. Oh. Ben, thank you cheers. very much. Thanks Take a lot, care, everybody. See you next year. <laughs>